रेडी ना today's class is on uh, respiratory function test the respiratory function test uh, to aid the diagnosis to assess functional impairment of uh, a given disease or to monitor the progress and the treatment benefit of that particular disease especially bronchial asthma COPD etc there are few abbreviations FEV1 is a forced expiratory volume in one second forced vital capacity FVC VC is the vital capacity in a relaxed state peak maximum expiratory flow is a PEF TLC is the total lung capacity always residual volume TLCO is a abbreviation of gas transfer factor for carbon monoxide. KCO is gas transfer for unit lung volume. The disease characterized by airflow narrowing, expiratory flow limited by dynamic compressions of intrathoracic airways some of them close completely during expiration the maximum expiratory flow is limited by dynamic compression of small intrathoracic airways The hyperinflation of chest results and can become extreme if elastic recoil lost due to parenchymal destruction. Example in emphysema, which cause lung inflammation, scarring, fibrosis, characterized by progressive loss of lung volume with the normal expiratory flow rate that is the hyperinflation of chest which is a usually results and can become extreme if elastic recoil is lost due to parenchymal destruction example emphysema which cause lung inflammation scarring fibrosis characterized by progressive loss of lung volume with a normal expiratory flow rate. The gas exchange impaired by parenchymal destruction in emphysema. So interstitial disease disrupts local matching of ventilation and perfusion. So in interstitial lung disease due to autoimmune disease or um, collagen vascular disorders <coughs> like a silly scleroderma, mixed connectivity disease, rheumatoid arthritis which will disrupt uh, the local matching of ventilation and perfusion. There is good ventilation but there is no perfusion at alveolar level.
So in a respiratory function testing, airway narrowing, lung volume and gas exchange capacity are quantified and compared with the normal values and uh, adjusted for age, gender, height and ethnic origin. It may change from one ethnic origin to the other ethnic origin plus uh, height uh, and the gender of the person and the habits of the person also. If they have sedentary habits, they have less values. If they are athletes, they have more values. The airway narrowing is assessed by forced expiration into peak flow meter or spirometer. Peak flow meter are cheap and convenient for home monitoring, for detection and monitoring of asthma. But values are effort dependent. The vital capacity are obtained the <coughs> from maximal forced and relaxed expressions into a spirometer. The first expiratory volume one did uh, proportionately reduce to any air flow obstruction resulting in a forced expiratory <coughs> volume in one second and uh, vital capacity the ratio is less than 70 percent in uh, air flow obstruction. When airflow obstruction is seen, spirometry can be repeated after giving a beta 2 agonist, salbutamol or levosalbutamol. So, the reversibility to the normal suggests asthma. Suppose anybody has got uh, a ratio of forced expiratory volume and vital capacity is less than 70%. You can give a dose of uh, beta 2 agonist and salbutamol and so there will be definite reversibility of the lung function and the ratio also the forced expiratory volume in one second and vital capacity ratio will definitely improve to 80%, 85%. The tracheal stenosis or compression from small airway narrowing, the flow volume and the loops recorded during the maximum expiratory or inspiratory FUTs. The lung volume can be measured by dilution of an inhaled inert gas, the helium, and uh, by determining the pressure volume relationship of thorax by body plethysmography. The lung volume that is measured by dilution of an inhaled inert gas like helium by determining the pressure volume relationship of thorax by body plethysmography which is uh, a machine and where uh, the person stands and compresses the chest wall to the maximum extent and measures the expiratory volume of the lung and again it relaxes during uh, the deep inspiration to the maximum level 
which will give the volume of the lung by helium gas the gas shadows that can be measured in a chest x-ray or uh, the fluoroscopy this method measures the volume of intrathoracic gas which mixes quickly with the tidal breaths while uh, the latter measures uh, the total intrathoracic gas volume including poorly ventilated areas such as bulle to measure the capacity of lungs uh, to exchange gas patients inhale a text mixture of uh, 0.3% carbon monoxide which avidly bound to hemoglobin in pulmonary capillaries after a short breath hold the rate of disappearance of carbon monoxide into the circulation is calculated from a sample of expirate expressed as total lung carbon monoxide co-transfer factor the helium is included in the test breath to allow calculation of volume of lung examined by the test breath the transfer factor expressed per unit lung volume termed as the kco kco the pulmonary function test in a, in case of asthma and chronic bronchitis forced expiratory volume is decreased in both vital capacity is decreased and forced expiratory volume and vital capacity ratio is also decreased less than 70% so the total lung coat carbon monoxide transfer may be normal in a asthma and chronic bronchitis and uh, the carbon monoxide coefficient is also normal in asthma and uh, chronic bronchitis and uh, residual volume in asthma is normal or uh, increased chronic bronchitis it is increased and in a, in another two conditions we see <coughs> forced expiratory volume in one second is decreased in emphysema and uh, pulmonary fibrosis both uh, conditions uh, it is uh, decreased hello class lo unnanu class lo and vital capacity is also decreased in emphysema and pulmonary fibrosis forced expiratory valve one and vital capacity ratio is also decreased in emphysema and pulmonary fibrosis the total lung carbon monoxide is decreased both emphysema and pulmonary fibrosis the carbon dioxide coefficient is decreased in emphysema or normal or decreased in fibrosis total lung uh, <coughs> 
total lung no trans transfer total lung transfer of carbon monoxide increased in emphysema and decreased in pulmonary fibrosis the residual volume is increased in emphysema and decreased in pulmonary fibrosis so these are the fun pulmonary functions then you have a few more uh, like uh, arterial blood gases and oximetry should be done in all the patients of respiratory system or multi organ dysfunction or patients uh, who are suffering with uh, uh, <clears throat> cardiac failure the arterial blood gas analysis has to be done or at bedside you can test it with uh, oximetry the measurement of hydrogen ion concentration partial pressure of oxygen partial pressure of carbon dioxide should be tested by and uh, derived by carbonate concentration of arterial blood is essential in assessing the degree and type of respiratory failure and for measuring acid base status acidosis or alkalosis due to respiratory derangements of pulmonary arterial carbon dioxide to metabolic causes the pulse oximeter allows the non invasive continuous assessment of oxygen saturation in patients who require monitoring in order to assess hypoxemia and its response to therapy this has to be done the oxygen blood gas analysis should be done in all the patients with respiratory disorders to know the pa patient is presenting uh, <coughs> with hypoxia or hypercapnia uh, that has to be under acidosis should be ruled out uh, in those patients and uh, addressed properly to um, <coughs> uh, bring out of uh, the acidosis in those individuals and respiratory failure and uh, the acid base status as uh, respiratory acidosis metabolic acidosis and alkalosis they should be tested and uh, treated properly then uh, you have exercise test uh, a repeated uh, repeated uh, measurements uh, sometimes uh, are helpful in early disease or in patients complaining of exercise induced symptoms for example exercise testing uh, with the spirometry before and after may be helpful in demonstrating uh, exercise induced asthma suppose uh, anybody who has got asthma which is uh, certainly exercise induced if you think that you can uh, subject the patient for 6 minutes walking exercise outdoor sh or shuttle test uh, and this uh, can provide a single rep and a repeatable assessment of disability and uh, response to treatment finally cardiopulmonary exercise testing using a cycling or a treadmill or exercise with measurement of metabolic gas exchange ventilation and cardiac responses is useful in distinguishing cardiac limitation from respiratory limitation in breathlessness 
breathless patients. <clears throat> the respiratory function in old age. What happens to the respiratory functions in old age? The reserve capacity is vast, significant reduction in a in function can occur with aging with only minimal effect on normal breathing. The ability to combat acute interstitial disease is reduced. And uh, there will be decline in a forced expiratory volume 1, forced expiratory volume 1 and forced vital capacity ratio falls by 0.2% per year from 70% at the age of 40 to 45 years due to decline in a small airways with the age smoking accelerates this decline threefold on an average and symptoms only will occur only when forced expiratory volume 1 drops below 50% of pulmonary uh, function predictor. And uh, you take these are all the uh, pulmonary function tests. And next is uh, the plain chest x ray. It is done in patients having chest disease with the PF film provides the information on lung fields and increased shadowing represent accumulation of fluid or collapse or consolidation. And uh, the presence of uh, ring shadows uh, and uh, diseased bronchi seen on the end on view on the tram line shadows adjust uh, bronchiectasis. A large pulmonary <coughs> embolism. The relative oligemia and may cause a lung field to appear abnormally dark, so increased translucency is seen in emphysema. Our ultrasound examination is uh, it's more sensitive to detect uh, pleural effusion. And uh, uh, second thing is uh, on plain chest x-ray examination, you have to look for uh, the trachea. Whether the trachea is in the central or it is uh, pulled or pushed. In fibrosis and collapse, usually the trachea will be pulled towards the same side. In pleural effusion, usually it is pushed to the opposite side. In a MOS lesion in the chest wall, if you usually the trachea is pushed to the opposite side or sometimes may be stationary or may be pulled towards the same side if there are more radiations like you know malignancy with involvement of the pleura and the trachea and pulling it to the same side despite having a mass and diffusion. And uh, <coughs> in pneumothorax, usually the trachea will be pushed to the opposite side. The pneumothorax uh, may be uh, localized, the tracheal shift may not be so much in localized pneumothoraces. The ventilation perfusion imaging is of great value uh, to detect pulmonary thromboemboli or ventilation 
assisted by inhalation of uh, 13 genone gas, radioactive gas. The perfusion by the injection of uh, macro aggregates of technician 99M and uh, albumin that injection of macro aggregates of technetium 99m albumin a filling defect in the perfusion scan accompanied by preserved ventilation and perfusion mismatch and this is a uh, very commonly seen in a thromboembolic uh, phenomenon due to chronic path from pulmonary thromboembolism. <coughs> then uh, positron emission tomography. It's a radioactive tracer, 18F FDG, that is a fluorodeoxyglucose administered rapidly taken up by malignant tissue. And uh, it has uh, so phosphorylated uh, but uh, not metabolized, uh, becoming uh, trapped in cells. It's mostly de gets deposited malignant cells. PET useful in staging mediastinal lymph nodes and uh, metastasis. And uh, then you have pulmonary angiography. The pulmonary angiography is of great value in making the diagnosis of uh, pulmonary embolism it's a gold standard test for a pulmonary embolism where you can see a definite cutoff sign in these individuals where the dye will go and uh, stop at uh, the level of the thrombus which is blocking the vessel or distal to that uh, and uh, the segment uh, which is supplied by that particular pulmonary Artery will be infarcted many a times, which will show an infarction with the, the low density image. And uh, pulmonary angio is, a, is also of a great help in a diagnosing <coughs> primary pulmonary hypertension primary pulmonary hypertension and uh, to study the right heart pressures pulmonary angio uh, is done then you have uh, laryngoscopy <coughs> the laryngoscopy is a um, so then uh, the, you have uh, the in OPD in, in direct laryngoscopy you ask the patient to open the mouth and hold the tongue with uh, a gauze face tightly all the patient to open the mouth uh, and you see look uh, into the throat and uh, the larynx uh, with uh, an, a mirror indirect uh, laryngoscopic mirror so by which uh, you can visualize uh, the larynx and its anatomy vocal cord movement or if there are any polyps or if there are any nodules over the vocal cords like in tuberculous nodule or, uh, or uh, singers nodules in uh, people who sing more songs abuse the vocal cords or you can see the uh, carcinoma originating from the larynx 
you have uh, another uh, this uh, direct laryngoscopy also where you can uh, use uh, direct laryngoscopy and uh, press the tongue down and uh, try to visualize uh, the larynx the same findings that can be made out as we have discussed just now directly you can visualize the larynx for any foreign body or the bronchoscopy if it is visible then uh, the bronchoscopy is also very good <coughs> you have fiber optic bronchoscopy or you have uh, rigid bronchoscopy the fiber optic bronchoscopy where uh, the bronchoscopy can be done the tray you can visualize trachea bronchi with a flexible bronchoscope performed under local anesthesia with the sedation as an outpatient and used for tissue biopsy bronchial aspiration taken for cytology and uh, bacteriological examination and uh, rigid bronchoscopy is of uh, they see this uh, uses of this uh, <coughs> and it can be done under local anesthesia with sedation rigid bronchoscopy needs a definite uh, general anesthesia the trick the mild sedation and you can use local anesthetic with the jalocam spray and uh, this can be done for a uh, bronchial aspiration for a uh, aspiration study and uh, taken for cytology and bacteriology bacteriological examination so the rigid bronchoscopy needs a general anesthesia to evaluate massive hemoptysis is one condition and uh, removing a uh, foreign bodies or uh, endobronchial uh, laser therapy and rigid bronchoscopy is of great value <coughs> excuse me in uh, stenting the uh, <coughs> stenotic bronchi excuse me and then you have uh, video assisted thoracoscopy and uh, the pleural aspiration and biopsy also the rigid bioscope mm, by bronchoscopy is used or thoracoscope thoracoscopy can be used uh, by sending the thoracoscope uh, through the second intercostal space and by where you can do pleural aspiration and biopsy and subject it for histopathological examination where uh, the diagnosis is in doubt or to prove the malignancy then you have uh, the immunological and serological tests the pneumococcal antigen is detected uh, by counter immunoelectrophoresis influenza a virus detected by fluorescent antibody technique the aspergillus antigens positive in hypersensitive pneumonitis the histopathology examination and uh, lymph node and uh, pneumocystis carinae can be diagnosed by 
immunoelectrophoresis, aspergillus, antigens, positive in hypersensitive pneumonitis. And histopathology also can be studied from uh, lymph nodes by doing a uh, thoracoscopy and biopsy of the lung also can be done in pneumocystis carinae chirovesi. This is uh, how you should uh, uh, write in the examination the pulmonary function tests uh, are of a very great uh, importance and usually it is uh, a very commonly asked question one should remember and try to write uh, whatever we have discussed just now. Thank you.